lose your key to your toolbox or just buy a piece of equipment that didn't come with one like I did, stay tuned. So here we got a, a toolbox that came on the front of a trailer I bought a couple years ago. I haven't bothered to put a key on it. I know how to do it. done it multiple times. Just haven't been put in a trailer where somebody could actually get in. It's been behind a fence. Maybe I've been storing it out in front of a fence and I don't want to lose $100 spare tire or tie downs or anything else I keep in there. So it's time to rekey it. So you see the lock right here and what will happen when you put the key and this will turn and it will come up and push against this and not allow this to slide over and actually unlock the unit. So that's all it does. Almost all these locks you will just have a, a nut or there will be a, a, a clip, two legged clip that will just slide in there and lock it in place. But this nut will just come right off and then your lock will just push out through the front. Sometimes there's two different styles. There's ones like this that has this um, this little arm that's just crimped on, or there's one that'll have a screw head that screws right in, and that actually retains it. And sometimes if this thing is huge, you'll have to loosen that screw head to pop your lock out through the front. But there's our lock. Let's rekey it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find a key that fits it. I have an existing key here that I've used. I've rekeyed at least 15 padlocks that, that this fits. So one last key on my keychain is good. So this one fits in there. So we'll be able to use this. You know, there's tons of different teeth pattern or groove patterns. So just find an existing key that you have that just fits it, okay? Now we're gonna take off this little crimp thing. But I'm also gonna mark which way I pulled it off. So, And we're going to take a semi-sharp chisel, not extremely sharp, and I'm just going to peel back the edges of this crimp. There you go, and it's coming off already. There we go, and you can see it's just a square shaft in there, and then they've crimped over the edges just to retain this. And like I said, some of them have a Phillips screw, or flathead screw, Phillips screw, that is actually threaded into there, and that just screws down, and that's what actually retains it. Then there'll usually be a little uh, retainer clip right here. Not really a retainer, but this what this does is just a little groove right there. So this only allows, um, or a little bump, and that only allows the key to turn quarter turn, either way. Otherwise, the key will just spin all the way around. Now, the lock cylinder will push out through the front, this particular one has a uh, something a little unique. It has a shielded um, lock hole, but it also has a uh, stainless steel retaining piece around the whole front that needs to come off. Um, a lot of locks don't have this. This particular one does. So I will just pry it. We'll just pry it up and pry it off the front. This this little ring. There we go. Covers off. We can put it right back on. It's not completely necessary. But now our entire lock cylinder will just pull right out. We're going to be careful because our tumblers are sitting right in there. If you don't know how a lock works, the keys have different bumps on them. And there's a groove. Well, there's a whole bunch of grooves in there, you see? So it can lock in different positions. But... We'll take this key and we'll insert it and you'll see that the different grooves on the on the key raise them to different levels. But you see this one's sticking down way too far down here and some of these are just a, a little too high for this lock. This key's actually really close, surprisingly. But that's what happens on these, these styles. So you have to have keys that do certain things and so this one's sticking down too far so we want to actually allow this to this to turn, you know, and that's that's how a lock works. Don't want to really remove any of our tumblers, but what they are is essentially just the this, and they just have different heights cut into them to count for different ones, and then there's a little spring down this little round hole right there. So we're just going to leave all that. We're not going to mess around with that. We're going to put our key in, and all the tumblers are sticking up or down. We're just going to try to stick our key in straight. 
give ourselves a channel to. We're going to take a file and we're just going to file it with the key we want to use. Is that the key I want to use? Yeah, that's the key I want to use. And we're just going until we hit the, the flush surface. So there we go. Let's get you in there. And you can see that all the tumblers are flush. So, we take our cylinder now, put that in, and with my key pushed in, I'll spin it a couple times, but there's a little bit of hold up, but put that in, nothing. Key goes in. We will reinstall our front cap, which the front cap is back on, where we bent out the edges, I'll just round that back over, I'll hammer that down in a second, now we'll take our a retaining pin, or retaining our our lock, our our position lock, our rotation lock that only allows us to rotate it a certain way. And I put a mark on it so I know which way. Because if if I put it like this, it will rotate just a little bit wrong. So make sure you put that back right. If not, go actually uh, test it on your piece of equipment. Go go see which way you need it to turn. And I mean, I need mine to turn. Um, from straight up to the right, a quarter turn, both ways. Before we get this all back together, make sure it all works. Take a large drill bit and just... And all that is doing is making it a lot thinner. I'm taking it down to almost a point on the inside but it's giving me a bit better spot for me to mushroom over the remaining material that I do have. So, because you want this thing to hold on there pretty tight. There we go. And that gives me a ton more space to actually get mushroomed material. So now I can take that. Yeah, much better. We can mush them over little individual pieces. Now we'll take a key. Oh, it's kind of hard to hold that. So we'll get a, there's little flat spots on there. There we go. And our lock works just like it should. You reinsert it, put our nut back on. Now, if you really didn't want to do this, you can just buy these locks and they'll come with a bunch of little different arms but most of the time you actually got to pry this arm off because these arms are the only thing that are really unique you have to pry that off and reinstall it on the other one and we'll just cinch this back up the other thing how I pulled off that front face off this one sometimes they'll be um, where this is screwed on there will actually be a little C clip or an E clip right behind and then that will allow the whole lock cylinder just to, to slide right out now we can take our key and there we go. It locks now. Now that I got one key for stuff, I can put it in, lock, lock it. It's all locked up. Because it's one key, I can come over here. To my lock on my trailer that I lock my trailer in my vehicle with and that'll unlock that and besides this lock down here I've got this lock right here that's a master lock that I lock up stuff to the trailer and it works for it as well you know this is a master that's a Brinks this one's a who knows what but now they're all the same key and makes it easy I do have a video on how to do master locks and stuff like that how to rekey those and I do have another video on how to rekey a 
like a, another truck toolbox. It was plastic, a little bit different, but same principle. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And everybody on Facebook wants to know that you watch this channel, and so share the video. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye.